it's 2.1 all over again. And derivatives from giraffes, please, people, that makes no sense at all. No, of course, today what we're talking about is derivatives from graphs. And so here's the thing. We've got this notion of a derivative as the slope of the tangent line, and we know it correlates to all sorts of crazy stuff like rate of change and, you know, other things. Um, really just rate of change. So there we go. And we've talked about derivatives based on functions, derivative based on tables. So let's just kind of quickly remind ourselves how you can think about the derivative as the slope of a tangent line and how you can figure out the derivative based on a graph. So let's say we've got some stinky graph like this. And what we're asked to do is estimate f prime of minus 2, the derivative of f at the point minus 2. Well, here's the deal, dudes. The derivative is the same thing as the slope of the tangent line. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at this x value, which is minus 2. We're going to find the x value on the graph, which is here. The corresponding point on the graph is right there. And now if we kind of eyeball the shape of that graph, we can sketch the tangent line our own selves. And if we do, just kind of roughly, it's going to look like this. Mer, 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 mer. Oh, that last part. Uh, uh, oh, no, no, no. Uh, okay, I'm more or less happy with that. So, dudes, I just drew a line, and that line is basically the tangent line. It's the line where if you zoom way in on that special point right here, then the line looks like the function around that point. If you zoom in enough so the function flattens out to become a line, that's the line that we just drew. All right, now, if we're trying to estimate the derivative, all we got to do is remember that the derivative is the same thing as the slope of the tangent line. So we can look at that line that we just drew and try to figure out its slope. And the easiest way to do that is maybe to eyeball some of these points. Um, so let's pick points that are far enough apart so that we can kind of estimate them. And in fact, if we look at minus 2 then it looks like we have, minus 2 is our x value, looks like we have a y value of something like um, negative 0.9. Negative 0.9. So we're just kind of eyeballing this, but that's okay, because the problem says estimate. And now let's look right around here. That seems like a nice point. And there looks like our x value is 0, and our y value is 1.5. So we found two points that seem to lie on this tangent line thing that we drew, and now derivative being the slope of the tangent line just means f prime of minus 2 is going to be the slope between these two points. So we're going to say f prime minus 2 is going to be equal to uh, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And here's what we get on top. We get 2.4. On bottom, we get 2. So overall, this seems to be about 1.2. So that's pretty cool, I guess. Now, uh, dudes, this estimation is something you may be asked to do. But more likely, you're going to be asked to do something that doesn't involve as precise numbers, but still involves something that's comparative. So here's what I mean. Maybe you see this question that says, if t is in years and f of t is in hordes of rats, then when are the hordes increasing faster? And maybe the options that we have are uh, time one, two, or three. So between these three points, we want to figure out when the rat hordes are increasing the fastest. And of course, uh, when I say t is in years and f of t is in hordes of rats, I mean that that applies to the graph that we have above. So we can go up here and we can say t equals years and f of t equals rats. And now what we want to do is look at this guy and find out when we have the fastest increase. So let's think about that for a second. Uh, and let's also remember that we only really care between these three points. Uh, t equals 1, t equals 2, t equals 3. So let's go back up here. Let's erase some of this crap that I drew before. We're looking at time 1, time 2, and time 3. And we're going to try to figure out when the rate of increase is the fastest. Okay, so let's kind of break this down. The first thing that we want to make sure we know is, let me go over here, rate of increase just means derivative. And when the rate of increase is the fastest, fastest rate of increase, all that means is biggest derivative. 
uh, G haha <laughs> derivative okay cool cuz check it out dudes um, rate of increase means derivative so the fastest rate of increase just means where is the derivative the biggest number so we're gonna go back over here and we're gonna sketch us some tangent lines and we're gonna see at these three different points where the tangent line has the steepest slope so let's begin if we use t equals 1 we're talking about right here and this tangent line uh, mm, mm, erase, erase. This tangent line looks maybe something like that. No, that's not quite right, is it? Maybe something like that. So at t equals 1, that's roughly the tangent line. Now at t equals 2, we got a tangent line that looks a little more like that. And at t equals 3, we have a tangent line that is more like this wow going way off into nowhere all right so dudes I just drew a bunch of stuff but presumably from this you can see that the tangent line at 3 is the steepest tangent line at time 3 we have the tangent line that actually has the biggest slope and so that means that time 3 is our answer we go back down here and it says uh, when are the hordes increasing the fastest increasing means rate of change that means derivative and the fastest means just the biggest derivative. And we found that the biggest derivative, or the steepest tangent line, happened at time three. All right, dudes, that's it. Catch you later.